Yo, what is up everybody? Are you ready to see another raging online ranked player in Madden? Well, you're gonna get one at the end of this video. As you can see by the message, he was not happy at the end of this game and we had a nice and fun back and forth that you guys will see at the end of this game. But during this game, I want to talk about the NFL Week 9 action. And this is the only 9-0 team lost in the NFL that I'm playing with here. Jamal Charles and the Kansas City Chiefs. Now, I didn't play this game when they went 9-0. I played this game like a week or two, probably like two weeks ago. But um, I got the Chiefs early in. I was just running the ball down this guy's throat. In pretty much the same formation, I was just killing him with the one formation. And you see Alex Smith getting the first down there with his legs. And then we go back to the run with Jamal Charles. It was pretty simple. And then he eventually decided he was going to stop the run. So we come out passing the ball on McCluster. But yeah, week 9, the Chiefs went 9-0 because they beat Jeff Toole in the Buffalo Bills. The Chiefs have been getting pretty lucky as far as going against back of quarterbacks. They haven't gone against an elite quarterback in... Um, first of all, since like Tony Romo, you want to consider him like a half decent NFL quarterback, which he, I would consider him above half decent. Um, that's probably the last time they went against a good quarterback in the NFL. Besides that, they got against the tools and Campbells of the world. But um, their defense basically won the game. The offense barely scored. Buffalo was a pretty decent team. They could upset whenever. They could come close to upsetting teams. They came really close to upsetting Buffalo. They actually beat the Panthers in week two. Granted, it was a kind of fluky call, but um. Yeah, so, I mean, Tool was doing good, too, until he threw the pick six. So, um, the defense continues to win the Chiefs games. The defense has not allowed more than 17 points in a single game this season, I believe. So, um, we're going to see what happens after the Chiefs bye week because they face the Denver Broncos. If they can hold the Broncos to under 17 points, kudos to them because the Broncos haven't been under, like, 30 points all season. So, we'll see how that goes. And, of course, the Broncos had their bye week this week, I think. And speaking of the Panthers that I mentioned earlier... They are rolling right now. The Ron Rivera, Cam Newton combination. You see me fumble the ball there. It is rocking and rolling right now. They just destroyed the Falcons. Could have been even more of a blowout if um, Cam didn't throw that interception at the end of the half. And it's still like a few things the Panthers kind of messed up. And they still blew out the Falcons. Of course, Matt Ryan has like no friends on offense besides Tony Gonzalez. But, um, you know, they are get the Panthers, they're getting it done. But they have a big matchup against the 49ers this week. So we'll see what happens. The Falcons, meanwhile, definitely done with the playoffs in case you thought they might have had a chance. Definitely done with that, and um, they might as well just go and try to get a good draft pick. That seems like what they're trying to do. Matt Ryan looks shaky as he's ever been in his career without Roddy and or Julio. So, yeah, the Falcons and their defense is definitely shaky. So, um, there's, like, no hope in Atlanta. And then um, the Cowboys and Vikings. Speaking of Romo, I mentioned him earlier. Romo, what the, I mean... I don't know what's up with the Cowboys. One week, their defense will play good and their offense will play bad. And the next week, it'll alternate. Their offense will play bad and their defense will play good. It's just... They can never have all three phases of the game work out perfectly for them. If they did, they would be a good team, but they don't. They, ever, they never have that consistency. And it nearly cost them against a very lowly Vikings team, led by Christian Ponder. Now, thankfully for them, the Vikings screwed up multiple times in this game late, including the Miss PAT. As you see Don Terry Poe, I believe his name is. Maybe Don Terry Poe, I think. That might be his name, but that dude is a block shedding beast. He just block shed the hell out of it. Just put that offensive lineman on the ground on fourth down and in inches and was able to make the tackle on Jed Collins. And that ended up ending halftime. We go into halftime with a 10 nothing lead, shutting this guy out right now. And we get a sack here. And then next play, you'll see my dude Eric Berry on the user here. He's trying to go deep. Nope, get your hands out the cookie jar, fool. And then the fun doesn't end there. Breaking a tackle. And then Eric Berry does what only few people can do. And one of them is Eric Berry. Take Take it to the house. When you get an interception with Eric Berry, look for a crib call because he's just capable of doing it whenever he gets the ball in his hands. Now, um, the Cowboys are still the favorites to win the NFC East. It's basically in their control. As long as they don't blow games like the one they almost blew against the Vikings, they could probably finish 8-8 eight and eight or 9-7 and seven and win the division and then probably play like San Francisco or um, Seattle in the playoffs, which they'll probably lose to. And then um, moving on. The Jets' playoff chances are still alive. Right now, I believe they are the second wild card in the AFC. Believe it or not, Rex Ryan's New York Jets are getting it done against these New Orleans Saints. And speaking of getting it done, we're getting it done. 17-0 right now. 
And then, you know, a little bit of BS stuff started happening in this game. First of all, he started getting a little bit of offense going, but there's also a little bit of nonsense that goes on, too. You guys will see it later. You guys can pick up on it. And, um, by the way, keep that in mind, the BS track. Who's getting more BS in this game? Okay, that comes into play when we, me and this dude have a little end-of-game conversation, quote-unquote conversation. <laughs> it's more of a back-and-forth thing. But, um, yeah, the Jets, um, they're bound to lose their next game following their pattern, but, um, they played the Patriots, Bengals, and Saints in consecutive weeks. And won two of those games. Even though they got blown out in the second one to the Bengals. You know, you win two of those three games. Congratulations to you. Because those are two of the best teams in the NFL right now. Even though the Patriots are a little bit shaky. They're still considered one of the best right now. Because they just keep on winning. And um, speaking of the AFC wildcard race. Another sneaky team that's in the picture is the Titans. Titans, I believe, are 4-4. Four and four. They beat the Rams. Pretty much dooming any little chance the Rams had left of getting a wild card. You see me run the wild, uh, um, the read option with Alex Smith and getting a ton of yards. But yeah, the Titans, they are in play for that second wild card spot along with the Jets and a few others. The Rams, meanwhile, like I said, their playoff chances are pretty much done. The slim chances with Kellen Clemens. That's over since they couldn't beat the Titans. And the Titans, meanwhile, they live to play another day. I mean, they played some really tough opponents lately, and now that their schedule might be lighting, lightening up, you know, we'll see what happens. And we'll see, um, they have to beat the, they probably have to beat the Colts once, I would think, to try to get into, um, the wild card conversation. As you see, that was just a BS touchdown. I don't know, Brandon Flowers, he's not really the greatest zone player, he's more a man-to-man -man player. And that proved it right there, got teabag and didn't even locate the ball, so, that was some real horse shit, man. <laughs> you know, so, um, now that we got the 10-point lead, we're just gonna try not to turn the ball over and kill some clock. So, um, next game, the Chargers and Redskins. Now, that was a hell of a game, because, um, the Redskins came really, really close to losing. They came one yard away from losing. Now, honestly, if I were the San Diego head coach, on fourth down and goal, well, like, two seconds left in the game or whatever, I would go for it. Like, fourth down and one, I think. Like, fourth down and inches. I'm not sure what it was. It was, like, fourth down and one, fourth down and inches or something like that. I would go for it and put the game on the line right there. Don't go into overtime and don't let a coin toss decide the game. Because you give the ball to RG3 and the Redskins, what happened there was probably what was going to happen. San Diego doesn't have the best defense in the league. I wouldn't put that much trust in them. I would put trust in your offense to hopefully get one yard to win the game. And they didn't, and RG3 skins live to play another day and continue to be a fringe team in the NFC East battle. The Eagles, I kind of eliminated them, but they're back in the conversation. And by the way, ultimate bullshit here. Come on, EA. I feel like EA just puts a bounty on me, man. They're just, they just make me fumble at all costs. But yeah, the Eagles kind of slipped back into the NFC East conversation. Which isn't that hard to do considering the Giants did a few weeks ago. As you see Brandon Flowers blow a coverage. Deep blue and this man blows the coverage. Come on, Flowers. Um, but um, Nick Bowles, seven touchdown passes. Uh, you saw that coming. Congratulations. Congra That's all I can say. Congratulations for um, calling that. But um, I didn't. I, I didn't think they would win the game straight up. I thought Oakland would win. Instead, the Eagles, um, they just beat up Oakland straight up. Three quarters it took for Nick Foles to get his um, seven touchdown passes. And um, let's make sure we get this onside kick here because Madden has been screwing me up a little bit here lately. Thankfully, it goes out of bounds. We're able to need the ball out, and we end up winning the game. And then the fun back and forth goes on. You guys will see that. I mean, yeah, Philly, I'm not sure who they play next week, but... You know, they could, they could win a game or two, like, get some momentum going. Anything can happen. We'll just have to see how Foles can play. The Raiders, meanwhile, there's slim, slim chances of getting into the AFC um, wildcard battle or done, probably. The Chargers, their um, slim chances of getting to the AFC wildcard battle might be done just because of how tough their schedule is. Chargers have one of the toughest schedules coming up. They have division games against the Chiefs and Broncos, which is going to be really hard for them. But, um, yeah, so I don't know how it's going to work out for the Chargers. Even though they look pretty good, they just... They keep on losing these close games. That's going to bite them in the ass. And uh, speaking of losing close games, Tampa Bay lost a really close game. And now you see the back and forth go. This, this, this gets fun. It goes on for a few minutes. <laughs> you know, uh, you guys could just watch it yourselves and um, comment how you feel about it. But um, the Seahawks came back down 21 nothing to beat the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Bucks absolutely came flying out the gates, but Seattle just clamped them down in the second half. And were able to rally enough. I mean, when you were watching that game, you could feel that Seattle was coming back, and eventually they did, and, um, I don't know, if the Seahawks, they continue to BS games out of their ass, I don't know how they keep on doing it, but, um, they keep on doing it. I kind of expected Seattle to regress this year, and they kind of did, but they just keep on winning games anyway, so it doesn't even matter. So, um, yeah, that's them, and then the, the Ravens, 
I, I had faith in the Ravens to get a wild card spot. I'm starting to lose it right now. I haven't lost all faith in them yet because they could go on a run. And considering the Jets are the second wild card team right now, I think the Ravens could put up a run still. I'm not eliminating them, but they didn't lost to the Browns, man. Come on. The Jason Campbell Browns. Flacco, step your game up, damn it. The defense isn't playing that bad. With the Flacco-led offense, they got to turn it up eventually. And Ray Rice, Bernard, um, Bernard, Bernard, Bernard Pierce, I think, and that run game, they need to get it going. And on the Patriots, like I mentioned before, all they do is win. They won against the Steelers, who look like crap. And let me see, I'm just continuing to go back and forth with this guy. But um, yeah, not not really much to talk about that game. Steelers are done. Patriots are probably winning the AFC East. And then um, Case Keenum versus Andrew Luck. Andrew Luck was just born to make comebacks. I'm just convinced of that. And this is still going on. This back and forth is still going on. I think it comes to an end here. So um. Yeah, I'll just show you guys a picture of Cookie Boy here as I go through um, the Sunday night and Monday night matchup. But <laughs> Super Cookie Boy. But um, yeah, the Chase Keenum thing. I like Chase Keenum. He looks all right. Actually, I'll show you guys some stats first. But um, look at how much games this guy has played. Holy shit. And he's talking trash and he can't even win. Not even close to winning. He just got lucky. But um, yeah, the Chase Keenum thing. It worked out. And then um, Gary Kubiak collapsed in the chart. I mean, the Texans also, their team also collapsed. Hope Kubiak and John Fox get better because... Um, that was pretty scary to watch live. You know, actually, we come out of commercial break and the dude's on a stretcher. But, um, yeah, the, the tech, uh, Colts were able to come back. And, I don't know, man. Colts, Colts were another team that continued to pull games out their ass. But when you win, you win. That's all you can say in the NFL. And then the Monday night matchup got defined by Aaron Rodgers getting injured and leaving for the game. And I kind of felt like Rodgers would get injured this season because he plays a little bit recklessly when he tries to roll out the pocket. He takes hits pretty much all the time. He never really throws the ball away. And that time, it cost them. McClellan buried him, and Seneca Wallace came in and couldn't do much. And Josh uh, Luke... One of these McCowns, I think it's Josh McCown. There's like three different McCowns, man. Confused the hell out of me in my last video. I called him Luke. And I'm pretty sure it's Josh McCown, but Josh McCown's looked good in both showings against the Redskins and the um, Packers. He's looked pretty good. So, um, even if Cutler doesn't come back next week against the Lions, McCown might still give him a chance to win. Of course, a lot of that has to do with Forte, Jeffrey, and uh, Marshall, three very good great weapons that can make pretty much any quarterback look good but at the same time McCown is executing the offense so shout out to him shout out to the Bears and the NFC North is going to be quite a battle especially without Aaron Rodgers for a few weeks so we'll see how that shapes up and how the rest of the NFL shapes up next week and until ne next time I hope you guys liked the video leave a like in the video if you enjoyed it subscribe for more man 25 gameplays and I will catch you guys next time